one of the most challenging tasks in bird photography is to take pictures of birds in flight. In this video, I will show you the workflow, the techniques and the setup I use to get the best pictures of birds in flights. Hi, I'm Mario Kilian and welcome back to another video. One of the first thing you need to consider, and I will go uh, quickly through this, is that you have to plan a few days before where you want to go to take the pictures. You have to consider the hour of the time, maybe in the morning or in the afternoon. You have to consider, of course, that the light will come from the back of you, so that it's in front of the birds, just like we are in this moment. Of course, the, it's not a good sun to, to film now, but it's a very good sun to take pictures of the birds. You have to find a place in where you know before that there will be a lot of birds, herons, uh, ducks, whatever, a lot of birds, you can take the pictures. And of course, one important thing is you have to take a sunny day that is the best and choose a place in where you have a clear background. My personal preference is to have a background in where I can see some green trees, waters. I think that gives a blurry, nice, colorful background. The first thing you need to consider after finding the best location is, of course, to choose what focus mode you want to use. In this case, birds are moving subjects. Therefore, you need to think that birds can fly to you or away from you. And you need the AFC continuous focus mode so that always the bird will be in focus. The next important point is to know which will be the focus area we will use. In this case, you can choose between cameras in a full area focus mode, a center area focus mode, a wide center area focus mode. It depends on the camera you have. In this case, in my Nikon, I prefer to choose the center autofocus mode. And that is because if I use a too wide autofocus area, I have the risk that maybe foreign objects can enter in the image and the autofocus can focus in this foreign image. For example, if a, a sailboat will cross now in front of me and the bird will be in front of the sailboat, it is the chance that the autofocus can get over the sailboat and lose the focus of the bird. And if I use only a little area in the center of the focus, I can be sure that the bird will always be in focus. In this case, my Nikon has the autofocus dynamic range. That means that there's a little square with some autofocus points around the square that predict in any kind of way how will be the object once it goes out of this square? It's supposed to be a very good autofocus mode, but in my opinion, it is a little bit too short and it's, at least for me, not easy to follow the object in this little square. Other good option is to use the eye tracking mode. In some modern and more expensive cameras, you have the eye tracking mode for animals. And of course, that will work very good. In this case, in this Nikon Z5, the eye tracking for animals don't work as good as I would really wish. But therefore, I don't use it. I use just the traditional autofocus mode. The next point is to now which will be the shutter speed I will use. Of course, we are talking about birds in flight. Therefore, I will need a higher shutter speed than usual for any other other object. I would do three differences in this. For big birds, for medium-sized birds, and of course, small birds. And I will increase the shutter speed in the way that I don't choose a too higher shutter speed because I can have the risk that there will be too much noise in the image and that I can choose a too slow shutter speed and that, of course, I can get a blurry image. 
in this case, I'm here in a place where I supposed to have uh, mainly herons or cormorants. These are big birds. And for big birds, I use a shutter speed between 1 over 1000 to 1 over 600. If I see that maybe can be ducks flying in front of me, I prefer to use a little bit higher shutter speed from 1 over 2000 to 1 over 2500. And if I have the idea to take pictures of small fast flying birds, of course, in this case, I need to choose a very high shutter speed, 1 over 3200 and 1 over 4000. And so, and what mode will I use in my camera? Personally, I prefer to use the manual mode and use the automatic ISO. Of course, you can use the shutter priority mode and there you can choose the different shutter speeds in order of the size of the bird that will be flying in front of you. Of course, aperture priority mode is something I won't use because in this case, the camera will choose the shutter speed and there is no chance that the shutter speed chosen by the camera will freeze the bird that's flying in front of me. And now, if I have my camera in manual mode or in shutter priority, I will know which aperture I will use. So if you could have a high gain camera or a fast lens would be the best. But in this case, I use the widest aperture my lens can do. In this Sigma 600 millimeters, the widest aperture is 6.3. Of course, as wider you can use the aperture in your camera, as better the autofocus will be work. And now, the next, which shutting mode I will use. Of course, the best is to use the continuous shutting mode, the burst mode. That means as fast as your camera can shoot. In this case of my Nikon Z5, it's about 4 to 4.5 pictures in one second. And now, another important point is different lenses have different setups you can use for different situations. In this case, my Sigma, I can use which will be the focus distance I want that the autofocus will work. For example, from uh, 2.8 meters to infinite. In this case, I know that the birds will fly at least at 10 meters in front of me to a maximum of 150 meters. So I preset up this lens to get a focus range between 10 meters and 150 meters. That allows me to have a more responsive autofocus for the birds that will fly in front of me. Another point is the OS system, the integrated stabilization system of this lens. It's supposed that the most of the lens have two way or two modes of stabilization system. And in the mode two, the lens will only create a stabilization from up to down, but not from right to left, so that I can easily pan the camera without having the risk that the stabilization system will freeze the movement of the birds. Another setup of stabilization systems is inside this camera. It's called the IBIS. In this case, I turn the IBIS off because with high shutter speed, I really don't care about the stabilization of the sensor in the camera. Maybe if I shooting with slower shutter speed for more static objects, I will have the stabilization system of the camera on. But in this case, I only use the stabilization system of the lens and maybe in mode two. Of course, you have to try it and prove if it works. If it don't works, I would recommend you to turn the stabilization system of the lens off. And now, Maybe one of the most important things, in my opinion, which are the techniques I use to get really nice pictures. The first one, of course, I told you at the beginning of the video was to choose a place in where I have a clear background so that I can focus the bird and all the background will be 
nice blurry that uh, improves the image of your bird and makes it a really awesome pictures. And next is, of course, you need to learn how to pan with your camera to get the most stabilized image possible. In this case, of course, I try to use my arms very tight to my chest and the face very strong to the visor of the camera. And I move all my upper part of the body to follow the bird. Another good idea is to have a pre-focus on the camera. Sometimes the autofocus will pump between the forest distance and the closest distance. Therefore, I use a I used to put the autofocus in about 20 meters. And then I start to autofocus. That will help the autofocus to be faster. And so, most of these techniques are, of course, my recommendation, but are not necessary a uh, statement. You need to go out and try all the setup in your camera and find the perfect shutter speed, the perfect aperture, of course, remember that as wide open the lens is, as better the autofocus will work. You need to find which is the best focus area so that you can keep the bird in the center of the image and the autofocus can work permanently to track this bird and take the best pictures. And so, that was all for today. That are my recommendations to get the best out of the image of birds in flight. I really hope you like this video. If so, don't forget to subscribe and give it a like so others can see this video too. Now, go out and take your best pictures. I know you can't. And don't forget to plan the day before where you want to go and how will be the light in the place you want to go. See you next week. Bye bye. <music>